In this video, we will explore the use of inquiry-based instruction to help students understand the impact the physical environment had on the development of early American Indian cultures. Through work in region-based inquiry stations, students will discover how the regions differ and connect this understanding to the clothing, food, housing, and settlements of different American Indian groups. Before we dive into these inquiry stations, Let's talk briefly about what inquiry really is. In the simplest terms, inquiry is all about sparking students' curiosity. Traditionally, teachers have introduced students to new topics by pre-teaching important vocabulary, discussing the content, and then allowing students to explore the ideas further. Inquiry-based education flips this idea on its head. You may hear the memorable phrase ABC which means activity before content, or even the extended version of this phrase, ABCBV, activity before content, before vocabulary. The idea is that students have a shared, hands-on, minds-on experience that helps them to better understand the content and associated vocabulary at a later point. This is only a taste of what inquiry-based learning entails. If you would like to learn more, consider visiting edutopia.org and searching for the term inquiry. The inquiry-based activities discussed in this video will address the history and geography standards focused on American Indians. This includes SS3H1, which expects students to locate six regions where American Indians settled and compare and contrast how people in each region obtained food, clothing, and shelter. The Related Geography Standard, SS3G3, Element A, focuses on why American Indians occupied the areas they did and the impact this had on the types of villages that developed. Additionally, the activities previewed in this video will also address Economic Standard 1, specifically the use of natural resources and several of the map and globe skills included in the standards, such as comparing and contrasting categories found on maps, using map keys from different types of maps, using a map to explain the impact of geography on historical events, and drawing conclusions and making generalizations based on information from maps. Some information processing skills from the Georgia Standards of Excellence will also be addressed, including comparing similarities and differences, identifying social studies reference materials, and drawing conclusions and making generalizations. To open this unit, you may choose to put up a wonder wall in your classroom. This is nothing more than a very large piece of paper, perhaps butcher paper like that you would put on a bulletin board. Your Wonder Wall is a collecting ground for students' questions before and throughout your study of American Indians. Students independently write their questions and wonderings all over the wall. Prior to writing on the Wonder Wall, introduce your study of American Indians. Explain that students will be learning about people who lived in North America thousands of years ago. Ask students to list all the questions they have about these people and the places they have lived on the wall. You may need to model the types of questions students would ask, such as, why do we call them American Indians? And, did American Indians have pets? Keep the Wonder Wall up and available to students through the entire study. As students begin to learn the answers to their questions, they may choose to write them on the wall. And, as new questions arise, they can be added to the wall. Because this is a structured inquiry lesson, the teacher will select some specific student questions from the Wonder Wall as the focus. It is likely that some students asked questions such as, where did American Indians live? What kinds of food did American Indians eat? What kinds of clothing did American Indians wear? And what kinds of houses did American Indians live in? These questions will become the focus of the upcoming inquiry activities. Prior to setting up your inquiry stations, you will need to collect a variety of images representing the natural environment of each region addressed in History Standard 1. This includes the Southeast, the Northeast, the Arctic, the Plains, the Southwest, and the Northwest. You can 
find good images by doing a Google image search for each region. Search terms such as Southwest Natural Environment, Animals of the Southwest, and Plants of the Southwest will result in thousands of images from which to choose for each region. You may choose to print the pictures or compile the pictures of each region into a PowerPoint presentation. It is also possible to order tourism brochures from almost every state in the United States and Canadian provinces. You can cut out useful pictures from these brochures. An internet search using the phrase free state brochures will result in multiple websites that will link you to each state's brochure order form. Keep in mind, though, that receiving these brochures can take a few weeks. So if you choose to do this, allow enough time for the brochures to arrive. Regardless of your method for collecting these images, remember that each photo should focus on the natural environment of the region. Images of mountains, rivers, deserts, forests, deer, seals, buffalo, etc. are perfect examples of what you will need. Pictures of human-made items, even those made by American Indians, are not what you need for this inquiry activity. Similarly, books about each region that offer textual information in addition to the images are not ideal for this activity. Collecting these images can be a bit time-consuming, but remember that you will be able to use the same images year after year. Once you have collected images that provide an overview of the natural environment of each region, you will set up six inquiry stations, one for each region. Each station needs a chart labeled with one region and a map of North America highlighting this region. The chart should also have three sections labeled with the following questions. What could you use from this environment to build a home? What could you use from this environment to make clothing? And what kinds of food would you eat in this environment? In addition to the chart, students will be provided with pictures from one region. When introducing the stations to students, explain that they are trying to figure out how early American Indians survived in different regions. Remind students that they are thinking about a time thousands of years ago, long before grocery stores or shopping malls or hardware stores. Everything these people needed to get food, clothing, and shelter had to come from the natural environment. When students visit a station, they should carefully examine the images found there. Using these images alone, they should answer the three questions found on each chart. You may wish to model this for students by thinking aloud. For example, I see lots of pictures of trees and rivers and even a few of ocean animals like whales. I bet people in the northwest coastal region used the wood from the trees to build wooden houses, and I bet they ate a lot of fish. I wonder if they even ate whales. Students will rotate through the stations and put their ideas on the charts. You don't want groups to be too big, nor do you want groups to spend too much time editing one chart. This is a fast-moving activity to get kids thinking about the impact the environment had on the lives of American Indians in different regions. Five minutes at any one station is plenty of time. It is best to leave these charts displayed around the room throughout the unit so that students can easily revisit the images and add new thoughts to the charts. Teachers may consider using the first five minutes of class time each day to have students add new thoughts to one of the charts. In the following days, students will examine different types of maps and use the information provided by the maps to make further predictions about how American Indians in different regions lived. This is an excellent opportunity to look at a variety of types of maps and consider how different maps provide different pieces of information. Some useful map types for these lessons are precipitation maps, temperature maps, and potentially climate maps and vegetation maps. If atlases are not available to your class, a simple Google search for any of these types of maps will result in plenty of free printables. It is not necessary to use all of these maps. Consider your students and the time you have available when selecting which ones to use. These maps will also be set up as inquiry stations where a new map is added for each region each day 
and students examine the maps to make predictions about American Indian life in each region. It is helpful to provide an overlay map of the regions so that students know which part of each map to focus on. These overlay maps can be traced onto lamination film or copied onto printable overhead transparency sheets. Because this is likely to be the first time most students have seen maps of this sort, you will likely need to offer a quick mini lesson each day on how to read the maps. You will be amazed at how well students make sense of these maps with only a brief introduction when they are using them to solve the mystery of how American Indians survived in each region. In addition to the copy of a specific type of map provided at each station, there will also be a chart with some guiding questions focusing students' thinking on how the information provided by the map helps them to understand how American Indians lived. If students are working with precipitation maps, you might include the following guiding questions on each chart. How might the amount of precipitation this region received affect the way the people lived in this area? Based on what you learned from this map, what do you think their houses might have looked like? Based on what you learned from this map, do you think that growing crops would be easy or difficult? Why? If students are working with temperature maps, it is useful to provide maps from both January and July to understand the intensity of summers and winters in the region. You might include the following guiding questions on each chart. How might this climate affect the way that people lived in this area? Based on what you learned from this map, what do you think their houses might have looked like? Based on what you learned about the climate where this tribe lived, what might their clothes have looked like? Based on what you learned from this map, do you think that growing crops would be easy or difficult? Why? You may also consider using climate and vegetation maps, but keep in mind that these maps often use terms such as steppe, tundra, and taiga, which will be new for most students. These maps could provide excellent enrichment for advanced students or students who have a particular interest in maps and geography. With the map inquiry stations, it is not necessary for every student to explore the maps for every region. A major goal for this activity is for students to explore different types of maps and see how these maps offer useful information. For this reason, it is reasonable for a teacher to assign groups to look at a single region for each map. These groups become the expert groups on each region. Once students have made predictions about how American Indians in each region lived based on their work with image collections and different types of maps, they can explore additional information from text resources, including textbooks, books found in the school media center, online encyclopedias, or videos including those offered through Discovery Education. All of their research at this point works to confirm or refute the predictions they made about life in each region. This increases student engagement in the content and makes their learning far more lasting than if they had simply read about the American Indians living in each region at the start of the unit. Using inquiry methods to help students learn this content allows them to work and think in some of the same ways historians and geographers do. If you would like to see more examples of how to use inquiry-based learning to enhance your social studies classroom, consider viewing the other instructional videos from the Georgia Department of Education for third grade.